Hi guys, it's Ash from Envy. In today's video, uh, we're just going to show you a bit about duckweed and a few tips in terms of how to remove duckweed and to prevent it in the future. We've actually been invited down today to uh, a pond at a local allotment near where we are and um, that's actually having a few problems with duckweed at the moment. Um, so we just figured it'd be a good chance to just show you what this is and what steps we would do to, uh, to help prevent it in the future. So one of the biggest problems with duckweed is there's actually no product on the market that will help treat for it uh, or, or kill it, essentially. Uh, well, anything that's safe for fish and wildlife. There are a couple of ways that you can help uh, treat for it if you do have it, uh, which we're going to go over as well in this video. Um, but there's also a few preventatives that you can do, which just helps just prevent it from growing, uh, limits the amount of nutrients in there it feeds on and so on. But yeah, let's, let's get straight into it. So the first question we'll go over is what is duckweed? And it's a question we get quite a lot, to be honest. Uh, it's something that I wouldn't say the regular pond owner is that familiar with. Um, and it is something that's not, you wouldn't get a lot of if your pond's got like a filtration system or if it's just in your back garden. It tends to be found more in natural ponds or lakes and so on. Duckweed's a very, very small aquatic plant, green aquatic plant, and there's about seven uh, varieties of it in the UK. Uh, but I'd say the most common two is just your average common duckweed and then fat duckweed. And um, they both do look very similar. Um, and to be honest, you, uh, the, uh, from a human eye, you'll probably not know the difference between the two. So given its name, um, it's actually a very good food source for ducks and other things as well. So things such as wildlife, some fish will I'll use it as a food source. Um, it contains a lot of protein in it. Uh, so obviously it is beneficial to a certain extent in a, in a natural pond because it will provide a good food source for, for anything that's living in it. It's also good for adding some shelter in there as well. So if you do have frogs, tadpoles, um, you know, really any wildlife, newts and so on, um, they, they can use this as more of shelter and somewhere to hide in case there is any predators in the pond. So the next question we'll cover is, uh, is duckweed a problem for ponds? And to be honest, no, it's not. Um, but I would say you're best to not have it than you are to have it. It feeds off of the same nutrients that blanket weed um, and algae will do as well. Um, so they all feed off of the same food source. So obviously the more blanket weed you have, uh, sorry, the more duckweed you have, uh, will then limit the amount of uh, submerged string algae and floating blanket weed that you've got as well. Um, so that side is a positive because obviously you do want to reduce uh, the amount of algae and blanket weed you have in the pond. But I would say the biggest negative uh, of having the duckweed, and actually the pond we're at today, um, is a prime example of this. It can really just grab hold of the pond. I do think this particular pond has been like this for quite a while now, uh, but just for some reference, it can double with size probably every day or two. With algae and blanket weed, um, we always recommend not to remove that where you can, because when you remove that, you're, you're taking the spores, they will snap off, drop back in the pond, and they'll continue growing. Uh, whereas with duckweed, you can manually remove it, um, but it's a lot easier said than done. So, so if you don't remove the duckweed from the pond, um, essentially it will just keep growing and growing. Um, and it forms what looks to be like just a carpet of duckweed over the whole pond, which does have a big effect on things like any aquatic plants that you've got in there. Um, obviously they feed as well off the same nutrients. So the amount of duckweed in there will limit their food source. Uh, but they also need a bit of sunlight as well to grow. So obviously by having uh, the carpet of duckweed over the top, it, it's really gonna uh, allow a very, very small uh, percent of light actually to go in the water. I also don't think duckweed looks great, uh, which I know is a bit of a personal opinion, but um, for me, if I've got a pond, uh, I want to be able to see my fish and, and any wildlife that's in there. Um, and you just can't do that when you've got duckweed, uh, especially to the extent of this pond here. So. Um, yeah, I would always try and remove where possible. So we're just going to go over four or five steps now in terms of preventing um, duckweed from growing in the future or just some useful tips 
um, for what you can do to, to at least try and um, suppress the growth in it. So the first one is actually going to be to try and improve the aeration in a pond. Um, duckweed loves to grow in stagnant water so if the water is very still then it's just creating the perfect environment for duckweed to grow so adding anything into the pond things like air stones fountains just creates some oxygen in there um, a fountain will create things like bubbles which obviously drop in the water um, as soon as they break up that introduces um, new oxygen into the water as well. So the next step we'll go over is just to uh, manually remove the duckweed. Now we did touch on this uh, a little bit earlier on in the video but obviously removing as much duckweed as you can do um, although I appreciate it might be easier said than done is probably one of the best things you can do. So you can actually do this with uh, either pond net, uh, which I'm assuming all pond owners will have, even if you've got a garden rake, uh, anything like that uh, will help manually remove it from the pond. So another good tip when you're uh, removing the duckweed is to not place it near the pond. Uh, it might sound a bit silly that, but when you put it, if you do remove it and put it near the pond, um, if there's any wind in the garden, it essentially can just blow it straight back in the pond. So you can put this anywhere really in like your garden waste bin, compost, you can put it in uh, compost if it suits, uh, obviously the compost that you have. So the next step that we're gonna cover is just how to prevent waterfowl access to the pond. Um, and I appreciate this may be easier said than done, um, especially if you've got a much larger pond but things like ducks and geese do uh, have a massive impact when it comes to the amount of duckweed that's in the pond whilst they do eat obviously the duckweed in the water there's a very high chance that they've actually been to probably five or six ponds before yours and will be covered in duckweed so when they come to the pond uh, obviously all the duckweed that they're bringing with them um, is just going to contribute to the amount you have in your pond um, and there's a high chance that they'll be bringing more with them um, than what they actually will eat. So um, yeah, you want to try where you can to, to prevent that. Try and reduce or limit the amount of just aquatic vegetation that's actually in the pond. They will view this as a food source again. So obviously if when the ducks or geese do visit um, and there's a very limited amount um, in the pond, uh, then they won't return because they know that this particular pond won't have a good food source for them. Uh, especially if it's visible on the eye, so anything floating, um, as nice as it is to look at, um, can also have some negative effects as well because they see it a lot easier. Another little tip to try and prevent them is you can get devices that will make noises um, when the ducks do uh, come into the pond. Uh, we're personally not a fan of them, um, but they do work, uh, they do the job, um, and I know uh, just from previous uh, you know, conversations with people, that they've had great success with them as well. So they, they do work um, and it's something to consider, I think, if you've got a much larger and natural pond um, where you can't really prevent them from, from going in there, then that would be more beneficial for you. So the next step is to essentially just add natural um, duckweed predators into the pond. Uh, really simple, it's just fish. Um, just adding fish into the pond is just a great way to monitor um, the amount of duckweed levels in there. Some of the most popular fish that eat duckweed are anything from uh, your common goldfish, uh, or of goldfish variety, um, grass carp and koi. Um, these are all great for actually viewing duckweed as a food source. Whilst these fish, uh, they won't actually solve the problem of duckweed, uh, but they can certainly just feed on the duckweed and essentially just help reduce it. So one of the last tips we're going to go over um, is to just use natural bacteria in the pond. So we've got a product called Sludge Clear, um, which is this one here. So this is designed to specifically target the sludge what's at the bottom of a pond. It's this sludge that leaches the uh, nutrients in the pond, which feeds, um, you know, the duckweed, blanketweed, algae and so on. Um, obviously, if you can limit the amount of nutrients in there with a product like Sludge Clear, then in the long run, this is going to help just prevent the growth of duckweed. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you an application of this now. Um, it's really easy to do um, and we, we just recommend doing it every seven days. So to begin the treatment of Sludge Clear, we're just going to start by filling this watering can up with some of the pond water. Uh, I'm probably going to go this side because um, it looks a bit easier to just get down to the pond. Um, you want to make sure you get this first, just because then as soon as you put the tablet into uh, the pond, it's going to break down straight away. 
Um, obviously with this particular pond we are getting some duckweed in here as well which it doesn't matter too much. Each tablet of this will treat 5,000 litres so the pond we're at today is 20,000 so uh, we're going to do four tablets um, here um, and then like I say that's enough for one treatment. We're just going to crumble them up they are quite easy to break up so I can just break them up uh, into pieces in my hand um, and I'm just going to pop them in here. So we've just given this a quick stir and we're going to leave it for a couple of hours now. So that'll just allow the bacteria to just uh, essentially have a couple of hours to get going and that's when it's most efficient and then obviously you're ready to apply. So we've left it a couple of hours now. We're just going to pour this as evenly as we can around the pond. For this particular pond, it's quite large, so it's, it's quite tricky to do it evenly. Um, so I'm just going to add it here, there and everywhere as evenly as I can do. Um, Right, that's it for this video. Um, so I hope you've got some use out of it. Um, if there's any questions you've got that we've not gone over or that we've not answered, um, comment below. Um, we're more than happy to help where possible. Uh, we do also have a support team on hand, so you can, if you wanted to give us a call uh, or an email, our contact details will be up on the screen now. So just one last thing from us, um, any support you can give the channel by liking this video uh, or subscribing to the channel is, is greatly appreciated. Uh, we're a few videos in now, uh, it's quite new for us, uh, it's the first time that we've, uh, me personally, has, has been on camera, so it's quite new, uh, but I feel like we're slowly, uh, we're slowly finding our feet, but any feedback you've got or anything more you'd like to see, uh, feel free to comment below, um, like I mentioned earlier, we're always welcoming uh, feedback, whether that be good or bad, because we can only learn from it, so uh, any feedback, let us know. Thanks guys, bye.